start off by saying, Call Laim La, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Makakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that do well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom. Shalom. So, you know, first and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Baha Rakakwadash, Damyad, the honors of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Okay, so this is a stronghold that takes hold on a lot of our people. Okay, mainly the people of ours that are in the Christian church. Okay, and the thing is, the Old Testament is in full effect. All right, I'll say it again. The Old Testament is in full effect. Okay, and there are some key points that I want to bring out to show that the Old Testament is in full effect and is yet just as valid as the New Testament. Okay, and the thing is, you have to ask yourself, who are you to ditch out one piece of the Most High's word? Okay, because the Lord, he spoke in the Old Testament just as he spoke in the New so who are you to dismiss the Most High's word? All right. Here are some uh, key points that I want to hit. Okay. The Old Testament is still relative, and I want to pull out scriptures that uh, prove it. All right. There's still prophecies in the Old Testament that have not come to pass. Okay. Such as slavery for the heathen, the kingdom of heaven, the new covenant in completion, the extermination of the nation of Edom, Jacob's trouble and the quote-unquote UFO invasion okay also why do many books in the New Testament quote scriptures from the Old Testament all right so those are a few key points that I want to go over in this video okay and I also want to mention this this is just food for thought you know Christians so-called Christians okay the ones who happen to be in the uh Christian church, all right, they were hypocrites, man, okay, they're hypocrites because they don't subscribe to the Old Testament, but yet they'll cherry pick all the loving and nice and gushy mushy scriptures that come from Psalms and Proverbs, okay, that's, that's, that's being a hypocrite, man, you're teaching our people not to subscribe to the Old Testament, but yet you still cherry pick scriptures from mm -hmm. Psalms and Proverbs, all right, or anywhere else, or Jeremiah 29 and 11, you know, they love that scripture, okay, so that's being, that's hypocrisy, man, now, let me go ahead and just grab these key scriptures, this is Luke chapter 16 and 17, Luke chapter 16 verse 17, it says, this is the this is red letter right here. All right, this is our Lord Yahweh Shai. It says, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Okay, so the, our Lord just said it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than one tittle of the law to fail. Okay, so what is that? The law comes from what? Really, the law is the whole Bible. Okay, but Yahweh Shai was emphasizing. Or making a, a, a point on the Old Testament. Because the law, the uh, Levitical law, comes from the Old Testament. Okay? And is really established throughout the New Testament as well. Okay? For instance, the Apostle Paul. Let me get some scriptures from the Apostle Paul establishing the Old Testament. This is Romans... Romans chapter 3 and verse 31. It says, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we establish the law. Okay, so the Apostle Paul is saying right there, we don't make void the law through faith. So just because 
Yahushua died on the cross and the Lord gave us uh, liberty and grace. Doesn't mean we make void the law through faith. Okay. He said, God forbid. So that means like, no, you know, this is Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So just because we're in grace, does that mean we continue in sin? So grace can abound? Paul, what does the Apostle Paul say? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? All right. So no, the most high forbid. Okay. And what does he mean? We are dead to sin live any longer therein. We're dead to sin because we have we have grace in the Lord, man. You know, so what does that mean? Uh, we still have an opportunity to repent, man, which makes us dead from sin, so to speak. Okay. Doesn't mean that we don't keep the law. Paul, Apostle Paul just said it. We, 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 do we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, man. You know? So And, you know, a lot of Christians, they love to run to the Apostle Paul. You know? They think that the Apostle Paul, his doctrine is, is, is just completely different. Okay? They think that he's telling you not to keep the law, which is not true. Okay? This is Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. It says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Right, because we're under grace right now. All right, but grace is a time period. It says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Okay, but by love, serve one another. What is love? First John 5 and 3. All right, for this is the love of, of, of the Most High that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Okay, it says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. What does that mean? Oh, we're in grace right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat this shrimp. The Lord going to forgive me. No. Okay. That's using liberty for an occasion to the flesh, man. All right. Verse 14. It says, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, what is the apostle Paul saying? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. Romans 13, starting at verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So hold up. If the law or the Old Testament wasn't valid, why is the Apostle Paul talking about this? Verse 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right. So that's what it means to love your neighbor as yourself, to not work any ill will towards your neighbor. And how do you not work ill will towards your neighbor? By following the law, statutes, and commandments. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou, can, thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not, uh, you know, and it says, if, it says, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So that's what the Lord meant when he said, when the uh, the men were tempting him, saying, what is the true greatest commandment or what is the greatest commandment he said love the lord with all your heart you know and to love your neighbor as yourself okay and then he said the second is likened unto the first why because both commandments have to do with the entire law okay have to do with the entire law so what does that mean that the lord believed in the old testament if you will okay and all the disciples believed in the old testament all the apostles believed in the old testament and i'm gonna prove it Okay, so that's the point on that right there. All right, because you have a lot of Christians, you know, they run to the Apostle Paul's writings and they think that he's saying something that he's not. So let me get some more scriptures proving that uh, the Old Testament is still valid. Okay, this is 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Okay, so like I mentioned before this clip, I said, who are you to put a cap on the Most High's word, pretty much? You know, who are we to just uh, 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 choose which words we're going to listen to out of the Most High? Okay? That within itself is a sin. Okay? We're supposed to subscribe to all the words of the Most High. Okay? Whether you're in that situation or not, you're still supposed to subscribe to all the words of the Most High. All right? This is 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture... It doesn't just say only New Testament scriptures or Old Testament scriptures because you have a lot of people who only believe in the Old Testament as well. OK, but that's a whole nother conversation. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of the most high 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It says all scripture is given for that, that the man of God may be perfect. What did Yahweh say? Okay, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. What do you, how should I say? Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Okay? So subscribe to both the Old and the New Testament, man. That way you may be perfect. Okay? Now let's go to the Old Testament. Let's go to a book that Christians, modern day Christians, okay? Because there really is a difference, man. All right, let's go to a book that modern day Christians love to read. Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, Yahweh, but a just weight is his delight. Okay, so only believing in one part of the Bible is a false balance. Okay, so if you only believe in the Old Testament, that's a false balance. If you only believe in the New Testament, that's a false balance, man. All right. And that's going off. That's a sin. You know, this is Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 26. And, and, and notice how the Lord said in Luke 16 and 17, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than one tittle of the law to fail. Remember that. OK, so that means that the law is still valid to this very day. All right. So. Remember that this is Deuteronomy 27 and 26. Deuteronomy is a book out of the uh, Deuteronomy is the fifth book out of the books of Moses. OK, which is what is known as the law. But really, the whole Bible is the entire law. All right. And I'm going to prove that as well. This is Deuteronomy 27, uh, 27 and 26. It says, Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amun. Okay? So, hey, right there goes to show you, curse. You're going to be cursed if you don't confirm to all the words of this law. So if you don't conform to this whole entire Bible, front and back, you are cursed. Okay? You're cursed, man. All right? Now, let's go ahead and keep grabbing these uh, points right here. I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 20. It says, to the law and to the testimony, right? The law represents the first five books of Moses, and the testimony is known as the... Uh, okay, so the first five books of Moses is known as the Torah, and the testimony is known as the uh, Tanakh, okay? Which is about, like, basically the teachings and the prophets, okay? So... Or the Torah is the teaching, the Tanakh is the prophets, okay? So anyways, let's go ahead and read this real quick, all right? To the law and to the testimony, all right? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, okay? So right there, it goes to show you, to the law and to the testimony. So if you don't speak according to the Old and New Testament, there's no light in you, man, all right? There is no light in you, Okay? So we are, we are to subscribe to the entire Bible. All right. This is Isaiah 51 and 4. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Right. So if you're not, if you're not subscribing to the Lord's law, such as the commandments, you're not subscribing to the Old Testament, then you're not under that light, man. Okay. And what did the Apostle Paul say? What did the Apostle Paul say? Let's go ahead and get it, man. Because, you know, you have a lot of modern-day Christians. Notice how I say modern-day, okay? Modern-day Christians run to the Apostle Paul's writings to try to make it seem like something that it doesn't, to say something that it doesn't. So now, let's go ahead and see what the Apostle Paul said. Because like Isaiah 51 says, go back to the law to get that light, right? The light will proceed out of the Lord from the law, right? This is... Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 26, it says, For if we sin willfully, after we have received, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, 
there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So hold up, hold up. Why is the Lord, why is the Apostle Paul saying there remains no more sacrifice for sins? If we're under grace and we could do whatever we want to do. We're under the New Testament. We can do whatever we want to do. Why is the Apostle Paul saying there's no more sacrifice for sins if we sin willfully, man? And what does it mean to sin willfully? It means to come into the truth and the knowledge of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, then to go back into the world. That's willful sin right there, man. All right? So if, you, if, if, you, if that happens to you, there's no repentance, man. Verse 27, But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Now listen, the Apostle Paul brings up Moses' law, and he compares it to Yahweh Shai. Verse 28, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of the Most High and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. So the Apostle Paul is saying, when you were under Moses' law, you died under two or three witnesses. How much more punishment do you think you're going to get by just stepping on Yahweh Shai's blood for the spirit of grace, man? Pretty much. So, oh, we're under grace. I'm going to go ahead and eat this shrimp. Or I'm going to go ahead and eat this pork. Or I'm going to go commit adultery because we're under grace. So what? You know, we're under grace. Paul, the Apostle Paul is saying you're going to get more judgment for doing something like that than if you were under Moses' law. Getting caught by two or three witnesses, man. Verse 30. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All right. Now I'm going to go back to Isaiah 51 for real quick, just to uh, shed a light on the situation to bring remembrance. Okay. Isaiah 51. And verse 4, it says, Hearken unto me, my people, give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Now, this is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 32. This is the Apostle Paul writing. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great a fight of afflictions. Okay. So what is what is a, a illuminated mean to uh, what does it mean to be illuminated? It means to be enlightened, to have the light, man. If I was to darken this light, okay, and now I pull the cover away from the light, I'm illuminated now, man. So it's the same thing. When you only subscribe to the New Testament, you're darkened, okay. Or if you only subscribe to the Old Testament, you're darkened. But if you subscribe to the entire Scriptures, guess what? You're illuminated, okay. So now. Let me go ahead and get some more uh, key scriptures that prove that the Old and New Testament is still valid. Matter of fact, let me get another scripture from the Apostle Paul. All right. This is... Um this is Acts chapter 24 and verse 14. It says, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. Okay? So right there, he said it right there. The Apostle Paul believes all things written in the law and the prophets. So he believes the Old Testament, man. The Apostle Paul said he believes all things in the Old Testament. Okay? He doesn't just believe in the New Testament. So right there, you have it. The Apostle Paul himself just said he believes in the Old Testament, man. I'll read it again. Acts chapter 24 and 14. But this I confess unto thee, that afterward, Slakia, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. Okay. So that's the point on that right there. The Apostle Paul just said it. He believes in the Old Testament. For lack of better for lack of better words, Apostle Paul just said he believes in the Old Testament, man. He says he believes in the law and the prophets. This is Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Malachi chapter 3 
and verse 6. It says, For I am the Lord Yahweh, which is the Most High God's real name. Yahweh means He is or He exists. Okay? It says, For I am the Lord Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay, yeah, why, why does it mean, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed? Because if the Lord changed, right? If the Lord changed how he felt or he changed his word, then guess what? We will be through, man. Because the Lord made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that their seed will inherit the kingdom of heaven and the Lord will deal with them and he will be their God, so forth. But if the Lord changed, then guess what? We will be destroyed because of our wickedness, man. And a part of our wickedness is our people only subscribing to the New Testament or vice versa. Okay? So that's why the Lord said, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You know? This is Lamentations. Um, chapter 3 and 22. It says, It is of the Lord Yahweh's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Right, man. Right. His compassions fail not. Meaning the Lord doesn't change, man. All right. They don't fail. You know, because the scriptures say if, if, if the Lord had not a, left a remnant, we would have been likened unto Sodom. OK, meaning what? If the Lord didn't leave his elect to be saved out of this place, then the nation of Israel would not be in existence, man. OK. As a matter of fact, I want to make this quick point, too, because he said if the nation of Israel wouldn't be in existence. Right. This is Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah 31. All right, I had this uh, written later for the lesson, but I'm going to read it anyways because that's the spirit. Jeremiah 31 and 31. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay? So the Lord in the Old Testament saying he's going to make a new covenant. All right? Which is really that New Testament, man. Verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, and the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord Yahweh. What is that covenant that our people break? The law, statutes, and commandments. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write. Okay, it says, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. So the Lord, he's saying his new covenant is him putting his law in our inward parts, man. Not that he's going to completely do away with his law. <laughs> okay. It says, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Hold up. So hold up. He just said it right there. He's going to put their law in their inward parts, man. And we're not going to have to teach everyone to know the Lord. What does it mean to know the Lord? First John 2 and 4. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay. So what does it mean to know the Lord? To, to follow the Lord's law, such as commandments, man. Okay. And to keep the faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's what it means to know the Lord. That's how you know we're not completely in that new covenant. Because we're still teaching. We're still teaching, man. Not everybody knows the Lord. You still have Israelites who are atheists. You still have Israelites who don't believe. You still have Israelites who don't understand. So that's how you know we are not in the full new covenant, man. Okay? That's how you know the new covenant is not complete. That's why the scriptures say the law was our schoolmaster, all right? And the law uh, is, uh, is, is waxing old ready to vanish, ready to vanish. Doesn't mean that it is, that it is vanished already. It's ready to vanish, meaning that when the Lord comes back and all things get set back in order, then the old covenant will be vanished away, man. Okay? Verse 35. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon for the stars, uh, of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea, the waves thereof, Roar, the Lord Yahweh of hosts is his name. So <clears throat> the Lord is talking about the sun and the moon and the stars, right? We still see the sun and the moon and the stars this very day. You look behind me right now, you see light from outside that's coming from the sun, okay? 
Verse 36. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Okay? So the Lord says, if the sun and the moon and the stars go away, then the seed of Israel shall depart from me. So guess what? The seed of Israel is still today. So what does that mean? The covenant that the Lord made with them is still valid to this very day. Okay? And this whole Bible is really written about the Israelites, man. All these other nations, if you're not an Israelite, you're going into slavery. Okay? Period. All right? The New Testament isn't salvation for the heathen and everybody and their grandma. Okay? The New Testament is really about salvation for the Israel and a more minute scale salvation for the elect of Israel. Okay? I'm going to get one more scripture proving that the Old Testament is valid out of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai's own mouth. Okay? And now if you think that you're on a level to speak over Yahweh Shai, then that's between you and the Most High, man. Okay? Because I know I sure as hell am not. All right. And I'll say this. I know sure as hell you aren't either. OK, you're not over Yahweh Shai. And even the scriptures say so. First Corinthians 11 and 3. It says that Yahweh Shai is over the man and the man is over the woman and that the most high is over Yahweh Shai. So you're not over Yahweh Shai, man. And what does the scripture say? Yahweh Shai is the door. OK, to get to the most high, you need to get through Yahweh Shai first. All right. Matthew. Chapter 5 and verse 17. And what does it say? Any man that doesn't go through the door and he goes through the back way, he's a robber, man. So you need to get through Yahweh Shai first. So you're not over Yahweh Shai, man. You don't just have a direct channeling to the Most High. So now my point being is this. Our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai HaMashiach said it himself that the law is still valid. And I'm going to prove the scripture real quick. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not. That I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. What does it mean? He's saying, don't think that I'm coming to, to do away with the law and the prophets, man. So don't think I'm coming to do away with the Old Testament. I'm not coming to do away with the Old Testament. I'm actually coming to fulfill the Old Testament. What does he mean by fulfill? To, to complete the actions of the Old Testament as well as to fulfill the prophecies that are written of him in the Old Testament, man. So if Yahweh is written in the Old Testament, does that mean that the Old Testament doesn't matter anymore? And Yahweh doesn't matter anymore because he's written in the Old Testament. Okay. There's many prophecies of Yahweh in the Old Testament. Verse 18. For, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall on no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Okay. Then heaven and earth has not passed away. And guess what? Heaven and earth will not pass away, man. Because heaven and earth is going to be eternal. Meaning what? The seed of Israel is going to be eternal. Meaning what? That the law is eternal, man. The law will be written in our inward parts. The law is forever. Okay? Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so... You Christians, you modern day Christians, you're breaking one of the, you're breaking pretty much all the commandments, okay? And you're teaching men to do so, okay? Guess what? It says, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, the scribes and Pharisees were the men who pushed the law, okay? It says, if your righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, it says, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Boom. Right there, Yahweh is telling you, keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Or else you're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Period, man. Plain and simple. Let me get another one. This is Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one man came, it's like you, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Okay? So he said it right there. If you're going to enter into life, if you want to enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. Okay? And where do those commandments come from? From the Old Testament, man. 
really throughout the entire scriptures, okay, but from the Old Testament, all right? The Apostle Paul said it. Do we make void the law through faith? The Most High forbid. Yeah, we establish the law, okay? That's the point on that right there. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 26. Uh, starting at verse 25, actually, Luke 10 and 25, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So, and he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? So, Yahweh I just said it. What's written in the law? What does the law say? Okay. <laughs> so that right there goes to show you that the law, such as the commandments, is still valid, man. He just said it. What's written in the law? You know, what do you read out of the law? And he answered, saying, Thou shalt not love the He said, Thou shalt love the Lord Yahweh thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And we already broke down what that meant in Romans 13, starting at verse 8 to verse 10. Okay? And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Okay? So y'all shall saying what? Keep the old testament. Keep the ways of the old testament, man. There's no difference between the Old and the New Testament. They are, it's all one book, man. Okay? The Old Testament writes about the New Testament. Okay? And the New Testament quotes scriptures from the Old Testament, man. All right? That's the point on that right there, man. Now, like I said, there's still prophecies in the Old Testament that have not come to pass, such as slavery for the heathen. Now, I'm not going to go in depth to this, but I'm just going to pull... Quick scriptures. This is Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. What is that talking about? The Lord is going to have mercy on Israel and he's going to set us back up in our own land. Okay. Those fake Jews that are in Israel today are not the real Israelites. And they'll say it out of their own mouths, man. Okay. They'll admit it out of their own mouths. All right. They're not the real Israelites. Okay, and how do we know whether or not the real Israelites? The scriptures is going to prove it to you. All right, and it says, and the strangers shall be uh, shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The strangers is talking about the Israelite foreigners. Okay, that's who the strangers are. The Israelite foreigners, the Israelites that are scattered amongst all nations. Verse two, and the people shall take them, and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh. For servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and shall rule over their oppressors. Okay? So, guess what? We know those Jews aren't the real Jews in the land of Israel today because they don't own slaves, man. They don't own slaves. Okay? And it says they're going to rule over their oppressors. Who oppressed those fake Jews? It's known to believe that those fake Jews were oppressed by Hitler and the Nazis. You don't see those Jews having those Nazis in slavery, man. Okay, so that's how you know they're not the real Jews, man. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are the real Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And we're going to rule over our oppressors, starting off with the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, okay? And these other heathen nations, man. They're going to be our slaves in the kingdom of heaven, and the Bible says so, okay? So that's a quick one showing you slavery in the scriptures. Now I'm going to get another quick scripture showing slavery in the scriptures, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. And that's a prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled. Okay? We're not in our own land, nor do we have slaves. We are the slaves right now, man. That's why it says they shall rule over their oppressors and take them captive whose captives they were. Even the New Testament talks about slavery. And I'll get that. It says Isaiah, chapter 60, and verse 10. And the sons of strangers... Okay, talking about heathen, okay, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee, for in my wrath I smote thee, but I and but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually, they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Okay? The forces of the Gentiles talking about the riches and treasures and spoils of the Gentiles. Verse 12, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Okay, so any nation that's not going to want to serve the Israelites is going to be destroyed. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh. All right, so that's a quick scripture showing 
slavery in the Bible and on a more minute scale, slavery that the Israelites are going to have the heathen nations in slavery. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. This is coming out of Yahushai's mouth, man. This is red letter. Revelation 2 and 26. This is New Testament as well for you, for you modern day Christians, man. Revelation 2 and 26. It says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, what is the Lord's works? This truth, okay? It says, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father, okay? It says that we're going to rule the nations with a rod of iron, man. What are some other scriptures in the Old Testament uh, talking about how we're going to have slaves? Prophecies in the Old Testament, how we're going to have slaves. Psalms 2 and 8. Daniel chapter 4, uh, it's like it. actually Daniel chapter 7, all right, where it talks about how the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, Daniel 2, okay, you know, those are testaments, and those are uh, uh, prophecies in the Old Testament that have yet to been fulfilled, man, so if the Old Testament, there's still prophecies in Genesis that haven't been fulfilled yet, in the book of Genesis, there's still prophecies in the book of Genesis that haven't been fulfilled yet, okay, so, if, if we're saying there's still prophecies in the book of Genesis, the first book out of the scriptures that hasn't been fulfilled, that doesn't mean that the scriptures, that doesn't mean what? That means what? That the law is still valid to this very day, man. And what did the Lord say? Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, none of these shall fail, talking about the prophecies, and none shall want her mate. Meaning no other book can compare to the scriptures or mate with the scriptures. Okay? So there's still prophecies in the book of Genesis. They haven't been fulfilled to this day, man. All right. Now, what's another point in the Old Testament that hasn't come to pass yet? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. OK, and a part of the kingdom of heaven is we're going to have heathen slaves, man. All right. What are some quick scriptures that I can pull? OK, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60 and um, Isaiah 60 and starting at uh, starting at verse 17 it says for brass I will bring gold and for iron I will bring silver and for wood brass and for stones iron and I will also make thy officers peace and thy exactors righteousness violence shall be no more heard in thy land Wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Do we call our walls salvation and our gates praise, man? Hell no. Okay? This scripture hasn't been fulfilled. This is talking about the kingdom of heaven. There's still violence everywhere in this world, man. You can't even go to a freaking... You can't even... Even though the Lord isn't dealing with these churches, you can't go to a church and worry about it getting shot up, man. Okay? And churches are supposed to be the house of the Lord. You know, which is not true. The scriptures say the Lord dwelleth not in temples built by man's hands. Acts 7 and 48. Okay. So right there goes to show you that that prophecy right there hasn't been fulfilled. Okay. Now, if that holds no weight to you, then I guess that the Lord's word doesn't matter to you, man. All right. Verse 19. Uh, I'm going to skip down to uh, verse. Actually, no. I'll leave off on that one. That's just a quick one, man. I don't really want to go too in-depth because I don't want this video to be too long. All right? The New Covenant. That's another prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled out of the Old Testament. And we read that scripture already in Jeremiah 31. All right? Extermination of the nation of Edom. Okay? The nation of Edom, so-called Esau or Edom, is the so-called white man. And the scriptures say that Edom, the nation of Edom, will be exterminated. Okay? Okay? Exodus 17 and 6 uh, Exodus 17 and 14 through 16 Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse uh, 19 okay Obadiah 1 and 18 all right Psalms chapter uh, 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 Salakia. let me get that real quick okay even King David wrote about the extermination of the nation of Edom all right so so the point is man, like he said, remember, oh, uh, remember, uh, let me get the scripture real quick. All right. So that just goes to show you that's another prophecy out of the Old Testament that hasn't been fulfilled. Okay. So guess what? The Old Testament as well as the New Testament is in full effect, man. All right. This is, um, 
Oh, yeah. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 21 through 22. That's another one. If you read the whole book of Obadiah, it's literally one chapter of the scriptures showing the complete utter destruction of not just the nation of Edom, but the heathen as well, mainly the nation of Edom. Okay. And that hasn't came to pass yet, man. Even you, you even have biblical scholars. You have biblical scholars that say that that prophecy hasn't been come to pass yet. Let me get this real quick. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. It sold millions of copies, man. All right. These are uh, 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 credible uh, biblical scholars, man. And look what they said about the nation of Edom. Okay. It says Edom. This is uh, uh, the definition of the word Edom uh, on page 142 in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. It says, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgments. It says future judgments. And then it quotes scriptures too. See notably Isaiah 34 and 5 through 6, Isaiah 63 and 1 through 6. All right. It says she is the only neighbor of the Israelites who is not given any promise of mercy from God. I'll show you so you know I'm not lying. It says it right there. Edom figures prominently in this in prophetic scriptures, prophetic scriptures, meaning scriptures of prophecy. OK, as a scene of great future judgments. See, notably, Isaiah 34 and 5, 6, Isaiah 63 and 1. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. That goes to show you right there that the nation of Edom is not has not been destroyed yet. And guess what? The scriptures that it quoted was scriptures out of the Old Testament, man. So it goes to show you that the Old, the Old Testament is still well and alive to this very day, man. Okay. What's another prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled out of the Old Testament? Jacob's trouble. Okay. What's some scriptures about Jacob's trouble? Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. Okay. Jeremiah 30. Okay. And verse uh, 6. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 15. Second Ezra chapter 16. Okay. Those are all scriptures. That are not in the New Testament talking about Jacob's trouble. And there's even scriptures in the in the New Testament talking about Jacob's trouble. Matthew 24, Luke 21. Okay. Uh, uh, there's uh, certain scriptures in Revelation. Like Revelation 6 where it talks about the pale horse. Okay. That's all Jacob's trouble. Now, here's a quick explanation of what Jacob's trouble is. This is Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. It says, and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat upon that sat on him was death and hell followed him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. OK, to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. OK, that's that's in, 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 in a short summarized version. That's what Jacob's trouble is. Mass death and destruction, mass famine. And, mad, and you have wild beasts running out here killing people, man. Okay? Such as Leviathan. Leviathan is prophesied in the New Testament. I mean, in the Old Testament. That prophecy hasn't came to pass yet, man. The Lord didn't let loose Leviathan just yet, man. Okay? On a mass scale. All right? So that just goes to show you that the Old Testament is still well and alive, man. All right. Now, what's another prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled out of the Old Testament? So-called UFO invasion. All right. The UFO invasion. Now, let me just go ahead and get some quick precepts. OK. And, and I'm not and they're really not UFOs. They're IFOs, man. OK. Identified flying objects. There's the so-called UFO spaceships that you people have been seeing. Those are the chariots of the Heavenly Father. OK. Now you can go on my page and you can go watch videos about it, man. I have I uh the Lord, okay? The Lord uh was a, was a, allowed me to be, you know, fortunate enough to witness his chariots, man. And not just me, there's thousands of people who have witnessed them, man. Okay? And now, the point of the matter is I have undeniable proof that the UFOs exist, man. Undeniable proof. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. It says, for behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury 
and with rebukes of flames of fire. Okay, those chairs is talking about the so-called UFOs, man. I'm gonna keep reading actually because this cuts you. This cuts you. Uh, this this prophecy right here hasn't been fulfilled, and it cuts you modern day Christians when you talk about you can eat your pork, man, with your pastor pork chop. Verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord Yahweh will plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. So if you're eating swine's flesh, the abomination and the mouse, which are all abominable foods, you're going to be consumed, saith the Lord Yahweh. So the Lord is going to destroy you for eating that shit, man. That's a prophecy that has not been fulfilled because you have people on mass scales eating pork, man, eating mice, okay, so-called Chinese food. Eating abominable foods like shrimp, octopus, crab, lobster. People have not been destroyed for that just yet, man. On a mass scale. So that prophecy right there hasn't been fulfilled. And this is one that I didn't have written down, but I just thought about it through the spirit of power Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. We haven't got our new bodies yet. That's another prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled. We haven't got our new bodies. What are some scriptures showing that we got our new... Matter of fact, let me stay on the UFO invasion real quick. I want to get one more scripture. This is Isaiah 60 and 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as their doves to their windows? That's talking about the chariots, man. How do we know that's talking about the chariots? Because the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is going to come back with those chariots. And the chariots can take on the form of a cloud or they can take on the form of a pillar of fire. They can look like a star pretty much, man. But really, it's a spaceship, okay? And what are some scriptures you can see on that, about that? Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Acts chapter 1, 10 through 11. Okay, those are just quick scriptures showing that the, that the chariots... You know, that prophecy hasn't been fulfilled, man. There hasn't been a quote-unquote UFO invasion. That's in the scriptures, man. Independence Day, they get that from the scriptures, man. Now, like I said, we haven't got our new bodies yet, man. Okay? The Lord hasn't gave us those new bodies. We haven't gotten bodies like Superman, you know, indestructible bodies. Those are scriptures that, that are prophesied in the Old Testament, man. This is Isaiah... Chapter 40, starting at verse 30, uh, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, Yahweh, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run to, They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That prophecy hasn't been fulfilled, man. Okay? We, we, if you run, if you go run a mile, okay? Of, uh, or if you go run 10 miles. I go, because, you know, you have some people, oh, yeah, I could run a mile easy. Da, 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 whatever, man. If you go, even if you, eat, okay, let me just stick to the point. If you go run 10 miles, okay, you are going to be a little weary, okay? You're not going to be able to run full speed 10 miles, man. I don't care how in shape you are, man. You're not going to be able to run full sprinting speed 10 miles, okay? But guess what? When we get the new bodies, we're going to be running 1,000 miles full sprinting speed and not get tired, man, okay? So guess what? That's another scripture that hasn't been fulfilled. What's another scripture talking about us getting new bodies? This is Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 8. Zechariah 12 and 8. It says, In that day the Lord Yahweh def It says, In that day shall the Lord Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble, feeble among them, so he that's weak among Jerusalem or Israel, at that day shall be as David, okay? And King David was a mighty man. King David had spiritual powers, man. It says that he leaped over a wall and that he ran through a troop, man, okay? King David had spiritual powers, man. They said King David was like an angel of the Lord, you know? He wasn't, King David wasn't an average dude. He said he leaped over a wall and that he ran through a troop, man. And he was a mighty man. King David was a warrior, man. He killed tens of thousands of men. All right. That's kind of why he couldn't, that's actually why he couldn't build the temple because he had too much blood on his hands, man. King David was a warrior, man. All right. It says, and in that day, the Lord defend the inhabitants, the, shall the Lord Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as the Most High. Or it says, shall be as God. It says, the house of David, talking about the elect, shall be as God, man. Meaning what? We're going to have God-like powers, man. We're going to be greater than Dragon Ball Z. Okay? It says, as the angel of the Lord Yahweh before them. 
Okay, so we're gonna have angelic like powers, man. We're gonna have superpowers, man. That's a prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled yet. All right, we don't have superpowers, man. We're still living in these corruptible bodies. All right, let me get one more scripture talking about us getting new bodies and be, and, and basically having superpowers, man. This is Jeremiah 16 and 16. Before it says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord Yahweh. Right, and right now we're fishing. Okay, so that's a prophecy in the Old Testament that's being uh, currently fulfilled. Right now we're fishing, right? But the other half of that prophecy hasn't been fulfilled yet. It says, and they shall fish them, and after I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill out of the holes and out of the rocks. What is that talking about? Because after America is destroyed by 200 million ICBM nuclear missiles, you're still going to have some people who, who are still worshiping their false idols and stuff like that, man. So guess what? The Lord, he's going to take his elect, which is the house of David, and the scriptures say they're going to be as God, man, as an angel of the Lord, Yahweh, before them. So we're going to have angelic-like powers, and we're going to go hunting these people down, man. All right? Watch that movie, Brightburn. That is us, man. Lord willing, we're of the elect. That's the elect right there. That's the type of power that the elect is going to have, man. All right? <clears throat> Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, chapter 3, okay, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, you know, Jeremiah 51, 19 through 23, Isaiah 41 and 15, okay, those are all scriptures, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and, 10 and uh, 6, okay, where the Apostle Paul even said it, that we're going to revenge all disobedience. He's talking about how we're going to be hunters, man. So the Apostle Paul knew. And the Apostle Paul also wrote about how we're going to be changed and we're going to get new bodies in the twinkling of an eye, man. When we get beamed up in them chairs, we're going to get new bodies in the twinkling of an eye. As a matter of fact, this just came up through the spirit. Here's another scripture talking about a so-called UFO invasion, man. This hasn't came to pass yet. This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and have made no account of his labors. When they, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. Yeah, when they see them chariots coming and they see them UFOs coming, man, they're going to be scared, man. And they're going to look at the strangeness of his salvation. They're not going to expect the men of the Lord to get beamed up in, in UFOs, man. They're not going to expect that to be the salvation of Israel. Okay, verse three, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we sometimes had in derision, a proverb of reproach. Yeah, you guys speak against the men of the Lord, man. A lot of you guys joke and mock the men of the Lord. Okay, so when in that day, when you see the men of the Lord getting beamed up, you're going to be like, shit, this is the same nigga that we used to make fun of, man. All right. It says we fools account to his life. Madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the Most High? How is his and how and says and his lot is among the saints. Okay, that's the point of that right there. You know, I'm gonna skip down to verse 17. Actually, I'll start at uh, uh, um, verse 16. It says, Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord Yahweh's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them, and his and he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor, and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. Okay? That's talking about how the Lord is gonna give us spiritual powers, man. And we're gonna be like a weapon. Alright, if you read in Jeremiah fifty one, starting at uh verse twenty, it says that the Lord the Lord said that we will be his battle axe, man. Okay, and that we're going to destroy the other nations. And then Isaiah 41 and 15 says, the Lord said he will make us a new sharp threshing instrument, man. Okay, so the Lord, just like how he used the nation to eat them to be a whooping stick to the uh, Israelites, is the same way how the Lord is going to use the Israelites to use, uh, 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 to destroy these other nations, man. And what did the Lord, what does scripture say? That the Lord said um, that the elect, it's going to be like the sword of a mighty man. Okay? I'm going to get that real quick. Because that's going into how we're going to get spiritual powers, man. This is Zechariah chapter 9 and 13. When I have bent Judah for me and filled the bow with Ephraim. Okay, Judah represents the southern kingdom. And the uh, northern kingdom is Ephraim. Okay, Ephraim represents the northern kingdom. So the Lord said he's going to have bent Judah. So Judah is going to be like a bow. And Ephraim is going to be like arrows. Okay, so that's a weapon within itself right there. All right, and that's parabolic talk. 
It says, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, which represents the so-called white man, Esau, Edom. It says, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. So the Lord is going to make us literally like a weapon, man. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 25 and verse 14 tells you how the Lord is going to put the spirit on Israel and they're going to lay vengeance on Edom. Okay. And they're going to go do according to Yahweh's anger and Yahweh's fury, man. All right. And the scriptures say anger is basically not fit for a man born out of a woman. Okay, so we can't we can't harness the type of anger the Heavenly Father has in these weak, corruptible bodies, man. And the scriptures even say that the flesh is weak. The, fle the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Put off the weak nature. Put off that mortal clothing, man. The scriptures say that the flesh is weak, man. So we haven't got new bodies yet. That's a prophecy in the Old Testament that hasn't been fulfilled. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 7. It says, and in the time of their visitation, talking about the elect, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. We're going to be moving so fast like sparks, man. You know how a spark just flash right through? Hey, the elect going to be moving fast like sparks, man. Okay, and we're going to shine. We're going to have a glow-like aura to us, man. Like how you see Goku in uh, Super Saiyan. Hey, the scriptures talk about how wisdom maketh the man's face to shine, you know? We're going to have the complete wisdom of the Heavenly Father, man. All right? Hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be it's gonna be crazy, man. All right, and it's gonna be glorious, man. All right, let me uh, let me look at this real quick, man. Check this out real quick, okay? You see how Goku has that uh, aura to him, man. You know, hey, man, that's how the elect is gonna be like, man. We're gonna we're gonna be shining like that, but more, way more glorious, man. Okay, this is just some low level. That's low level, man. All right, this is low level. This is a cartoon. Okay, but guess what? They got this from the scriptures because this is actually going to happen for the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Okay, we're going to be glorious, man. You know, that's why the Lord said He's going to give us praise and fame in every nation that basically uh that hated us, man. Roughly paraphrasing, you know, very roughly paraphrasing, man. This is somewhat of what it's going to be like, man. We're going to have that glow to us, man. Kings, man. Okay. Oh, matter of fact, that's another prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled out of the Old Testament. You don't have, look at this. This is Isaiah chapter 11, and I'll start at uh, verse 1, all right, because it's all valid, man. Isaiah 11 and 1, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. That rod is talking about Yahweh Shai. The scriptures say that Yahweh Shai is the root of David in Revelation 5 and 5, okay? Verse 2, and the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, Yahweh. This is Isaiah 11 and 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, Yahweh. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. This is prophecy talking about Yahweh Shai. Okay. Out of the Old Testament. Verse 5. And righteousness shall be in the girdle of his loins and faithfulness in the girdle. It says faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leper shall lie down with the kid. Talking about a baby goat. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them. You don't have that, man. You don't have wolves dwelling in harmony with lambs, okay? Or you don't have little baby goats dwelling in harmony with leopards. You don't have lions dwelling in harmony with uh, calves, okay? Young cows and stuff like that, man. That hasn't come to pass yet. If that was to happen, they would eat each other, man. It says, and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them. You don't have a little baby child leading wild animals man okay domesticated animals and wild animals two different things you don't have baby children leading wild animals man you don't have baby children playing with wild animals man okay it says and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox lions are carnivores right now man you don't see lions being herbivores that's a scripture out of the old testament that has not been fulfilled and the sucking child, meaning a newborn baby still sucking on titties, taking breast milk, it says, And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. So you're going to have newborn babies being able to uh, 
put his hand in a, in a poison venomous snake's hole and not get hurt. It says, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. I, that's Isaiah the 11th chapter starting at verse 1 to verse 9. That's a prophecy that has not been fulfilled yet, man. So that goes to show you that the New Testament and the Old Testament is still well and alive to this very day, man. Okay? And now, this is the last point I want to bring out if the Spirit permits. Why do the scriptures in the New Testament quote many scriptures from the Old Testament? Okay? Now let me go ahead and get them, and I'll close out on that if the Spirit permits. This is Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. And verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord Yahweh, make straight in the, in, the, in the desert for our power. Okay? This is talking about John the Baptist, man. All right? Now let's get that scripture. Because even John the Baptist says, I am the voice, I am the voice in the wilderness. Okay? So John the Baptist knew who he was, man. He knew what his job was, man. Okay? John, this is Matthew chapter 3. Starting at verse 1, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 3, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, talk about Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Okay? So even John the Baptist knew that that scripture was about him because he said it out of his own mouth, man. All right? Because they were asking him, are you Elijah? He said, I'm the voice of him. Prepare, prepare the way, man. You know? This is, uh, um, Salakia. Let me get it real quick. So, yeah, that means what? John the Baptist is a character in the New Testament, okay? And, 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 and he's quoting something out of the Old Testament about himself, man. So, what does that mean? The New Testament and the Old Testament line up with each other. This is John chapter 1, starting at verse 21. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Which John the Baptist is Elijah in the uh, reincarnation, if you can receive it. Yahweh Shire our Lord even said it himself in Matthew the 11th chapter. Okay? But John the Baptist, he couldn't understand that because the scriptures say there is no remembrance of the former things, you know. So you can't really remember all the stuff that you had from your past life or that you did from your past life. The Lord, he took that from your memory, man. Okay. Verse 22. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said in the prophet Isaiah. Or, okay. So that right there goes to show you that John the Baptist read the Old Testament and he knew about that prophecy of himself, man. Okay. Now let's get another one. This is Psalms chapter 104 and verse 4. Okay. Psalms 104 and verse 4. And it reads. It says. Actually, I'll start at uh, verse 1. Blessed, bless the Lord, Yahweh, O my soul, O Lord, Yahweh, my power. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment. Just like how you seen that picture that I brought out with Goku, man. You know, hey, the Lord covers himself with light as a garment, man. Okay? Just like how the elect, they're going to cover themselves with light as a garment, man. All right? Just like how I showed you in this picture, you know? That's how the Lord, the Lord has a, a light aura to him like that, man. And it talks about that in the scriptures. Like when Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights with the Most High, it says that his face shone. It means that his face was shining, man. And they had to put a veil over his face, man. Because the other people, they couldn't take that righteousness, man. Okay? They had to, they had to put a veil over his face. It says, who covers thyself with a light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot. That's talking about how the UFOs is the chariots, man. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels, spirits, his ministers of flaming fire. The, the Apostle Paul quoted something like that in, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1 and verse 7. Okay, let me get it real quick. 
Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Okay? So the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Paul quoted King David many times, man. All right? But that's just a quick one. All right? Isaiah 11 and 1, where it talks about the root of David. You go to Revelation 5 and 5. It's uh, the, the angel told John that Yahweh Shai is the root of David, man. Okay? So that goes to show you that the scriptures in the Old and New Testament, they all go together. This is Revelation 5 and 5. And one of the eight elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And, and what does that mean? When Yahweh Shai died... He, he was able to give the elect the understanding of the scriptures, man. Because at one point, the scriptures was sealed. And now, the scriptures is still sealed to a certain amount of people, okay? But it's unsealed to the elect. That's why the elect understand the Bible, man. Okay? Joel chapter 2, starting at verse uh, 28, all right, lines up. Okay, Joel chapter 2, starting at verse 28 through 30, lines up with Acts chapter 2. 16 through 22 okay and now i'm gonna get acts chapter 2 for the sake of time just to prove that the that the characters in the new testament they quoted stuff in the old testament man acts chapter 2 starting at verse 16 it says but this is that which was spoken by the prophet joel which is a prophet out of the old testament and it shall come to pass in the last day saith the lord power that i will pour out my spirit saith the most high slack you I will pour out, my, out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see dreams, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaid, handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Hey, this scripture right here is a prophecy that the Lord is is having be fulfilled right now before your very eyes. Verse nineteen, and I will show wonders in the heavens. Above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord Yahweh shall be saved Ye men of Israel hear these words Yahweh shall of Nazareth a man approved of the most high among you by miracles wonders and signs Which the most high did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know so hey in the book of Acts the apostle is saying, ye men of Israel, hear these words, man. And he's, he's quoting a scripture out of the Old Testament, man. Okay? So that goes to show you that the, that they those uh, the brothers in the, in the New Testament, they believed in the Old Testament, man. Okay? What's another good one? Matthew 4 and 4. Okay? Yahweh Shai quoted a scripture out of the Old Testament. Written in the law, matter of fact. Okay? In the book of Moses. Okay, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written. Okay, where is it written? Because Matthew is it's the first book in the New Testament. So where is it written? Okay, it's written in the book of Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Most High. That's Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Okay. So guess what? The Lord himself believed in the Old Testament, man. And doesn't the scripture say, doesn't the apostle Paul say, be ye followers of me, even as I am followers of Yahweh Shai? So you're supposed to follow after the Lord, man. Okay? And now Yahweh Shai quoted another scripture out of the Old Testament in the book of Psalms. Okay? And the book of Psalms writes a lot about Yahweh Shai. This is John chapter 10 and verse 34. Yahweh Shai answered them, it is, it, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods, okay? It says, if ye call them gods unto whom the word of the Most High came, the scripture cannot be broken, okay? So what does that mean? The Old Testament scriptures can't be broken, man. So the Old Testament is still valid. And what, what scripture did he quote? Psalms 82 and 6. I have said, ye are gods, and ye are all children of the Most High. That's Psalms 82 and 6, man, okay? So you Christians are hypocrites, man. You, you only subscribe to the New Testament, but you'll go cherry pick scriptures from Proverbs and Psalms, man. All right. That's just food for thought right there. OK, but the apostles quoted many things out of the Old Testament, man. And the New Te and the Old Testament prophesied about many things out of the out of, uh, 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 in the in the New Testament, man. 
Okay? There's still prophecies in the book of Genesis that haven't been fulfilled yet, man. All right? So with that, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha, Rechak, Wadashtam, Yah, double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone that rule well, peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Shalom.